I will see you next week when we get started on this project right here. We've got a little forward grip or yeah forward grip design recurve going on here so uh, that is the next project starting with a hickory belly piece here uh, this is actually the uh, other half of the ripped piece of hickory that was used for the uh, reflex deflex bow in the last uh, video that i made um, this one of course is going to be used for a new build uh, it is 66 inches long tip to tip which means it's going to be a 64 inch bow when it is done it is one and one quarter inches wide by uh, seven sixteenths inches uh, thick at the grip it has an even taper that i use the tapering jig for uh, to get down to seven thirty seconds out here at the tip so it is basically half as thick at the tip as it is at its grip. Okay, I've given this bow uh, a very basic layout. So it's just an even sweeping taper uh, to 5 8 inch tips. So we're not going to half inch straight away, uh, leaving 5 8 inch wide down here. Since we're recurving it, we need the stability of a little bit wider tip. So let those wide and then have picked out a piece of bamboo for our backing uh, that that might be a little on the challenging side. So this is, a bit of, this is an experiment for me all the way around. Uh, the nodes are going to be out here near the end of the uh, power lamp. Now, this is going to be a pretty, I don't wanna say extreme, but it's gonna be more extreme than typical for me as far as being a handle forward design. So we're really going to take advantage of the uh, deflex. We're going to get as much deflex into this grip as possible, or into the grip or riser area, and then do a pretty built-up power lamb that's going to be more like a riser on the front side, what would be the back of the bow, so between the belly and the bamboo backing, and then come in with just a little bit on the belly side to round out the grip. So since we are going to be putting a lot of that, uh, a lot of the basic build to begin with forward of the string, uh, I'm not expecting as much strain out here onto the main or these first two nodes coming out of the uh, grip area. Um, what I've been shooting for, what I'm opting for is to have and this is centered, is to have clear bamboo out here at the tip. So I don't want a node in here. That's what I'm trying to accomplish because we're going to be recurving these tips. And since it's going to be a pretty extreme recurve, I need something that's going to bend with that curve uh, pretty easily. And so no nodes is gonna help me in that end. So that's really the reason why I'm picking this particular piece of bamboo. All right, so got this thing thinned down really well, flexing good, a nice clean gluing surface here. So got our parts ready to go. Uh, from here, we're gonna start focusing on how we're gonna lay out the grip before we put in the recurve. So we're gonna get our deflex going. All right, we have steamed and deflexed this <coughs> belly piece. And the uh, next step is going to be to steam and bend the tips. I've got my recurve jig here. Got a piece of uh, formica on top so that I can bend it over the belly to help keep any splinters down should any of them try to lift. Although, uh, I suspect with this thin as this is we shouldn't see any major problems with that and you can see that this bow or this belly piece at least has maintained a good good reflex so from there 
Just set it in here. I can't even clear the garage door, but we'll bend it down uh, and put recurves in so that we've got a, a deflexed and then recurved tip out here at the, the far end. Okay, this is going to make a very interesting bow. So we've got recurves out here at our tips and a very deep deflex going on. Uh, the alignment seems to be pretty good, at least to, to begin with. Uh, we've still got a lot of glue up to do with this guy. <clears throat> and now we start with the riser piece of the construction so let's come up here now i have a piece of purple heart here it was sent over by a good friend of mine and i'm going to use it to do this handle forward design so if you can see there i have traced out the shape of the back of the bow here and what I'm going to do is cut this out so that I can get it onto uh, this surface here and we can start building up the front side of this bow so our grip is going to reside primarily on the back of the bow versus the belly so this was our block of uh, purple heart and I cut it out um, to the shape of the back of the bow and uh, smoothed it out on the uh, sander to get a nice smooth fit here now obviously the the wood's thin enough that it will it'll conform into shape you know however we want it to go now let's see here the length of this thing is 12 inches long okay so it's a 12 inch this will be a 12 inch forward style riser now this is how we got to kind of conserve the wood that we've got going on here okay so the other cutoff can sit right under here just like this right it's kind of like it's all all inclusive right or all all contained right like that but really we want to we want to put more into the front of this grip than into the back okay so uh i've got we won't do any more than just this little bit, right? And we'll we'll cut the thumb piece out into here, and uh, it'll be it'll be relatively small, right? I mean, once once we're done, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of purple heart showing on the belly side of this bow, and then this piece right here will rip right through the center. And we will put another piece of a different type of wood. And this is just what I have handy. This is not what I'm going to use. But we can put that in there to expand it out and give us more depth on the front. So we, we end up with like a thickness like this. And then we can work our uh, fade or whatever you want to call it into our riser so that it, it runs into the limb here. That's basically what I'm looking for, at least in terms of the fit for these parts at the moment. Here again, guys, with another great example of what this tape can do for you. Um, I am looking to cut just a very small section off of this uh, piece of our riser, or not riser, but uh, power lamb, as you recall. And it's going to leave me with about, you know, 
a quarter of an inch of a cutoff. And if you're using a table saw, guys, you know that having that quarter inch trapped between your fence and your blade is a recipe for a, a shoot back. But since my cutoff is affixed to a larger piece running through the, the saw blade, it is going to not be in that position. I'll always have it moving and moving clear of the blade so that it's not a uh, safety hazard for us here. Oh, helps to have power. about my cutoff distance there. Thankfully it stayed in one piece. Had flashes of having to redo that cut. Uh, but anyway, there you go. We will be able to now glue up and build up that riser uh, with a sandwich piece in between here. Here's our stack for the power lamp here. So all the parts that I just out. We'll get them all stacked up just like this. And then we will trim it off to make our power lamps right along here like this. Uh, we gotta get this all glued up first. All right, here is how our power lamp turned out. So you can kind of see where the blocks were and then cut off and then shaped this piece. It has a really pretty pronounced curvature right here that is going to uh, gonna make it pretty pretty challenging for that bamboo to, to ride up over the feather and over this hump and back down to the next feather. So my feathers are are actually really pretty good. You can see there that they meet the, the limb pretty smoothly. And I don't think I'm going to struggle with that transition. It's this is we're going to struggle to get a good glue line on either side of this. So I steamed and bent a really pretty extreme amount of, uh, deflex into that backing strip and then of course when you add heat to bamboo it it like dries out the outer edges so I had to go through and sand this again to get a flat surface um but I really think I think this is going to work get some tight wraps the tips are coming into uh Compliance pretty well here. Yeah, I think I think we're ready to glue this puppy up just like this. And this is all we're going to glue up to start with. Uh, just like any other um, of my bows, we are going to save the actual riser piece for last. It becomes difficult to get all of your pieces and parts lined up when you're dealing with such extreme bends. And when we start clamping out on these edges, it squeezes the uh, power lamb to the other side of the bow, right? So it just kind of wedges and pushes on down the way. So you can see how that would slide away from its line right here. And I, I want to prevent that. And it gets very difficult to do when you are uh, so, so consumed with trying to get the clamps on uh, when you're clamping down the backing like this. And so uh, I, I think I, I'm going to borrow a tactic from uh, regular laminated boyers, uh, say um, um, fiberglass type boyers, and I'm going to actually use a toothpick, a pair of them actually. I'm going to drill a small hole in here, and we're going to have toothpicks 
hold everything in alignment so when we go to glue it it won't be a big issue about everything sliding around the toothpicks will actually hold it in place and what this is going to since i'm put i'm putting in two of them uh you won't see fiberglass boilers do it like this they do just a single one in the middle but i'm doing two and the reason for that is so that it will also keep it from shifting in this direction so now i don't have to put a piece of tape out here during the glue process and worry about keeping it all together because the gaps are just huge when you're when you're gluing something that's this this crazy um, so these will be even just like that and when we put the tape on the belly side here then these can just drop right in and the, the, the tape will stop them and then we can affix the the uh, power lamp right to it guys here is the whole thing glued up uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we got going on here uh, Got the recurve molds out to keep the tips recurved real well. Like a lot of that stuff was trying to pull out when I was uh, fastening it down. Trying to get some of that natural reflex back into these limbs here. Or some of that tillered reflex. So this is going to be reflexed and recurved, but deflexed at the grip with a deep grip. And here's the other side recurve. So hopefully, since we're in the same uh, molds on either end with those recurves, we should have evenly recurved tips. And it took an awful lot of work and manipulating and reconfiguring and all of these things to get that glued up uh, on what appears to be a single plane. So everything appears to be lined up pretty well. <clears throat> But uh, this is the part where we wait, guys. Uh, I will uh, continue with this build on our uh, next episode, our next visit. We'll uh, get together next week and get the riser put on and get started on tillering this thing. And hopefully next week we'll just have it all tillered uh, to completion. So, guys, thanks for hanging out with me this week. I will see you next.